Hey guys, Kyle here with Gnarly Knives. Got a quick video for you today discussing different types of knife locks. I have 10 examples here. There are other examples. These are some that you'll most commonly find and a couple that you probably be, won't find as, as commonly. Um, so we're going to start off simple. Um, this first knife is the open on number 12. I'm going to use this to actually demonstrate two different locks. Um, so your very first, your very most basic lock on a knife actually really isn't even a lock so much, but I uh, call it a slip joint. So basically when you open the blade, it'll kind of click into place. So I'm just trying to demonstrate what that would be like. These you're going to find on, um, everybody pretty much has or has used a Swiss Army knife. The Victorinoxes and a lot of, you know, your grandfather's knives and stuff were the slip joints. So when they open it, you know, it won't just close, but as soon as you put a little force on it, that blade will close. Another good example, or another good lock here, also using the open L, this is called the collar lock. So you can see here the opening, the gap in the handle. So the collar lock, you can move one side or the other, and it does. This blade is locked into place. This is a very good and strong lock, and what's cool about it too, I don't think it would really be an issue, but if you ever had that spot on the blade where the lock contacts, if you ever were to wear, you can keep rotating this and it will just keep locking it into place. So it is cool, it's a very different old school kind of lock, but it is pretty cool. Um, so these are uh, the open L, these are the traditional French folders, this is just the large version of it, the number 12, first to 12 centimeters. I also have another reaper that's in my carving kit right now. Another lock you'll find very commonly, um, you'll see your buck 110s, a lot of knives your grandfathers would have been carrying, are back locks. So just as the name dictates, it's very self-explanatory, the lock is right on the back, but it's really cool because it is ambidextrous. And simply put, you just press the lock, you can see the little, see, you can kind of see the little bar raises up, you're able to close it, and then it just locks into place. Um, so this one here is on the Spyderco Chaparral. But the backlog is a very cool lock, very sturdy, very dependable, um, kind of a no BS lock. Uh, another good example, this is a little more updated, this is Cold Steel's version of the backlock. It's called the Triad Lock. So the difference between it is your regular backlock, there's just a little notch on your blade that the lock will just click into. The Triad Lock adds a second point of contact, and that becomes this little pin Let's see if you can kind of oh you can see it right in there so when you open it you have the pin which is up against your blade and then the lock hooks into your blade so these things are super super strong you can find tons of videos of people whacking the crap out of the spine of the knife trying to get the thing to close and they don't close unless you hit the button to close it they are very very strong locks don't know if you really need that much strength but if you do I mean, you basically have a folding fixed blade, more or less. Now, another lock that is very common you'll find on, I would say most knives that you'll come across in regular stores, um, is a very good lock, is your liner lock. So, simply put, so you see the two black sections here, this is your handle scales, and then the silver, uh, the stainless steel, these are your liners. Now, you can see this piece that's kind of cocked off to the side, that is your liner lock. So when you open it, you'll be able to see it just slides over into place, and that's where you get your lock up. So it's because it uses part of the liner. Now the next lock is very similar to this. It is the frame lock. So we're going to use the CT0450. The exact same in operation. Uh, difference being, instead of it being part of the liner that closes, it's just the frame itself that locks in. Uh, generally speaking, these tend to be a little bit stronger. Um, when it comes to closing, you might need to use just a teeny bit more force. Not one, not much that, at least not much that I've really noticed. Uh, but I have noticed some people of smaller stature and maybe not as strong fingers uh, tend to have a little more issue with these. But these are a great lock. Um, the one downside, the frame and the liner lock, is just. If it is a concern to you, you do have to put your fingers into the cutting path when you're closing it. Not generally an issue, but I have cut myself before using those. It's just something to note if that is something you are concerned about. 
Now, getting into another really cool lock. Now we're getting into Benchmade, their Axis lock. What's really cool with these is they are completely ambidextrous, so you can, from both sides of the blade, access the lock. Um, the only downside with these is just if you do disassemble knives, the Axis lock is a bear to take apart and put back together. Um, as I've said before, I do want to do disassembly videos. I will do a special Benchmade video. Um, you can do the complete disassembly on it, but I can also show you a cool way um, which lessens the hassle, if you will, of taking it apart. But very cool. Um, another good thing with it, your hand does not go into the cutting path at all when you open or close, and you know, you look kind of cool when you do that. So that there is your axis lock. Now, very similar, gonna go back to Spyderco on this. This is your Spyderco Manix 2. This is the lightweight version. This is the CTS BD1, if anybody's interested. But your lock that you have with this is the ball bearing lock. Now, it is very similar. You can kind of see the shiny on both sides here, your lock. So it can be accessed from both sides, just like your access lock. Um, it does behave a little bit differently, whereas there actually is a little ball on the spring, so if you release it and the blade opens and let go of the lock, there's a little notch in your blade where the ball bearing locks into place. It is actually a very strong lock. Um, only thing I've noticed with it is it just takes a little more to break in. I just feel like with a couple of bench maids that I have, um, they just would be a little bit easier to break in not a downside at all to this just means you, know, you just have to open and close it a few more times to get that smoother action with it but, oops, there we go. Um, but very very great locking system also a great knife as I said with the Benchmade 560 Freak review this is definitely my most comfortable folding knife uh, yeah definitely my most comfortable folding knife this is a close second I great knives. That's another video. Getting into a little more unique lock. Um, the only knife that I am aware of that has it, as of right now anyway, is the Cold Steel Pocket Bushman. And what this is, this is called the Ram Lock. So you can see this piece of cord. You pull out the lock itself, and then you are able to close it. I'll see if I can kind of get on camera for you, so you can. You can actually see it moving, and this runs the entire length of the handle. This is a super strong lock. As I said, with the um, Triad lock by Cold Steel, you basically have a folding fixed blade. This thing genuinely is a folding fixed blade. Um, I will do a review on this. This is a really cool knife. I would say, though, this is not really recommended, or at least I would not recommend this for a knife for someone who's getting into knives um, just because that lock it does need a lot of force it does take a little bit to get used to um, generally I wouldn't find it that big of a deal but with the slick aluminum handles it's easy to lose grip on it and this thing is like a little guillotine um, great knife though get it for under 30 bucks I think I paid 25 if that it might have even been 22 it was over a year ago when I got it now my favorite lock also one of my favorite pocket knives um, so we are going to go back to spider co with this yeah, I have a lot of spider I love spider co um, so this here is the f um, compression lock and its simplest way to put it it's basically a reversed for uh, liner or frame lock um, very similar you just the tab moves over when you the blade is opened and locks into place and then you release the tab and you're able to close the blade. What is cool though, your fingers do not have to go into the cutting path. And to me, I think this is just a lot of fun to play with. It is also a really strong lock. Um, it does have a pin that holds the blade in place. And also the blade is held in place secondarily with the lock itself when it positions into place. Um, very strong lock. It's just a lot of fun to play with. Just the sliver axe is a great knife. Um, I will try to get some more locks. Some, well, more knives with different locks. Maybe we can do a part two to this at some point. Um, this, like I said, was just a quick video. Just want to show different lock setups for different knives. Um, you know, people have different tastes. So hopefully I covered some that you might be more into. Um, so you guys have a great rest of your night.
And please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one.